Here we have an ASUS 4090 that came in for a melted connector, a burnt connector. And this is the third card we got in today. And we got 15090 with a melted connector. We have a 4090. Customer said he installed similar to cable mod adapter. And after doing so, the video card would boot up, but it would restart constantly. So I do not know what's going on with the card. And I do not know what brand. Oh, it's a Zotac. Okay. We'll probably work on this in a future video. We also have the notorious a video card that we work on every single day, the EVGA 3090. And we have an interesting item that came in today also. An Asus VX7 Lamborghini version laptop. Maybe I'll do a video on that one. Should be interesting. It's one of those older laptops, but the customer wants it restored. And I told the customer it's a lot of work. Those laptops are a lot of work. And he said it doesn't matter. He just wants it done. I took it in and I'll probably do a future video on that one. We have a lot of melted connectors to work on today. And every single one of them is expedited. So we need to get them done within one to nine days. A lot of work and not so much time. Let's take a look at the connector. And look at this. When I say look at this, you know there's a problem, right? Somebody mentioned that in the comment. So we do have a burnt connector. The first thing we do is confirm. You do not always go by what the customer tells you because 90% of the times the customer does not know much about the cart. He just want to use it to do his work and he does not know what goes on behind the scenes with those cards. Especially when a customer tells you, oh, I know it's a capacitor issue. How did you know? Did you dream about it? Let's preheat the board a bit with the soldering iron. I do have a preheater, but I have not used it since maybe 2016. Big waste of time. You put the board on there for 20, 30 minutes before you can start working on it. And it's going to heat the whole board unless you cover a portion of it. I feel like preheaters are a waste of time unless there's a specific purpose for it. But in this case, I just preheat this one area. And then we apply low melt solder to mix along with unleaded solder that's already on the board. So we can lower the melting temperature of the joints. Right now, try to remove the connector with just hot air. It's not going to work. You're going to stress the board with heat. And it's going to be a nightmare to remove that connector or to wick solder off the holes. I mentioned this in every video. And people still ask questions. What flux are you going to use for this repair? We're going to be using NF flux. Since it came out, the only thing that we use is NF dot flux. And I have already done many 40, 90, 50, 90, 30, 90 videos fixing cards using the flux. One of the best flux you can get your hands on and, and right now we are running low on stock for the flux even though we had a huge batch last time. Another batch is being worked on. It should be available in three to four weeks but right as of now we still have the flux in stock. Okay, enough preheating. Now we're going to apply NF.flux and it's going to melt right away because the board is hot. We're going to grab low melt solder and I've had it on my bench two seconds ago. Fume extractor on. We have a lot of glare, but it's okay at this point. Let me just apply low melt solder before the board cools down. We're going to apply more flux because the board was, I preheated the board and it affects the flow of solder. So we apply more flux so we can have solder spread evenly like you see here. You see how it covers the whole pad? And if it's not covering the whole pad, we either need flux or we need more low melt. A little bit of low melt solder goes a long way. 
Just bear with me with the glare. I do not have three hands. I just want to apply the flux and then we can turn the empty glare light on. Right now I'm not doing anything critical, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, so hot air. And we're gonna push down on the connector. But now I need to extend the board beyond my bench so the connector can fall down when I press on it. Okay, and that connector just fell off the board. Now we're gonna use enough of that sucker. Where is the end of that sucker when you need it? Where is it? Our ghost borrowed it. Right now I cannot show the sucker under the microscope because it's too long. Let's check. And perfect. We got all the holes, right? Yes. Okay, so the new connector is in. I need to keep holding that connector so we can solder it. Once I secure a couple of joints, I can let go. But before we start soldering, we want to make sure all the pins are in. And I'm speaking from experience. When I first started doing those connectors, I would push the connector in and later realize that one of the pins is not all the way in. It was stuck from the back. And I had to desolder the connector, change the connector and redo it. And have that flux. I just want to secure the connector. Maybe we can solder just a few pins, apply solder randomly. Okay, now I can let go of the connector. I do not need to hold it anymore. It's already secured by four joints. And no, it's not the joint that you smoke. Smoking is bad for you. I'm talking about solder joints. Unless you smoke solder joints or you smoke Lumel solder, then that's a different story. Let's use the anti-glare light and look at the difference, day and night. How many times do I need to mention the anti-glare light? I mean, I know almost every viewer on the channel bought one. Our Northwich Fix anti-glare light. If you have not and you are in the same type of business or you are doing this as a hobby, just log in to northwitchfix.com, click on shop. We sell all the tools that we use. Everything from this amazing Northwich Fix microscope, that flux, the braid wick, soldering iron, tweezers, thermal camera, one-stop shop. Just log in to northwishface.com, click on shop, add to cart whatever you need, check out pay, and we almost always ship out same day. Hot air station is currently out of stock. The articulating arm for the microscope is currently out of stock, but we are working on it. Right, so now we're gonna do the second pass. And we are done. Let's clean up and then you can see what I'm talking about. If you own an art museum, you would want to wish that this is in your museum. But let's clean up first. We don't want to just talk the talk, but we want to walk the walk. And tell me those joints are not the best thing you've seen in your life. Go ahead, write it down. Tell me this is not better than factory. 1,000 times. 
I mean, even if your card is working and there's nothing wrong with it, who needs the factory joints? When you can have joints like this. And that's using the end of that flux. How else would you get joints like this? Using the right flux for the job. That's the outcome of an amazing flux. All right, so alcohol is still drying. Write it down and tell me this is not better than factory. I want to read your comments. Tell me this is not better than factory. So I can send you to the ninth dimension. And if we flip the board, look at how solder made its way all the way to the pins. And that's what we want. We're done. I'm going to hand this card over to Big Boss to reassemble and test. I built a new GPU station for testing. It's currently outside. I don't have it here, but the plan is to have it in the room here. So I'm going to hand it to Big Boss to reassemble and test. And we are done. I'll probably do the 5090 in a future video, along with the ASUS Lamborghini version, which I'm excited to work on. Big Boss is taking it apart right now. It's an expedited repair. And I need to finish all the cards that I have on my bench right now. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video. Is audio working? Yeah. Whew. For a second, I thought we did not have audio. All that talk for nothing.